This is KGW News at Noon. And we start this noon with breaking news. Two executives with the Portland Timbers and Thorns are gone. Just about 90 minutes ago, the teams announced the firing of Gavin Wilkinson and Mike Golub. It's the latest fallout from the scandal rocking the National Women's Soccer League, involving accusations of sexual misconduct and emotional abuse. Evan Watson joins us now live from the newsroom. And Evan, a lot of people have been calling for these firings. Yeah, the latest calls demanding changes came on Monday when an independent review laid out systemic issues in the NWSL. The Thorns are one of the teams at the center of this. Former Thorns coach Paul Riley is accused of sexual and emotional misconduct against former Thorns players. The investigation released Monday revealed that the team was aware of the allegations as early as 2014, but Riley wasn't fired until a year later. When he was fired, the team didn't mention anything about the misconduct and they publicly thanked him for his service. Riley, who has denied the allegations, went on to coach another team in the NWSL. The investigation showed patterns of misconduct by Thorms and Timbers owner Merritt Paulson and front office staffers Gavin Wilkinson and Mike Gollum. The report also said Thorns were not forthcoming with certain information and attempted to hinder the investigation. Yesterday, Paulson announced he would temporarily step aside from all Thorns related decision making. And today, the team has decided to fire Wilkinson and Gollum. We talked with supporters of the team yesterday, and they want Paulson to sell the team. We want literally any sort of repercussions. You know, uh, so far, everyone that's been involved is still there. Um, we, we want tangible consequences and change. Paulson, Paulson also released a short statement yesterday apologizing for what he called the organization's role in a, quote, gross systemic failure to protect player safety. He added he doesn't plan to make further public statements on the matter until the league completes a separate investigation in November. I know you'll be working on more reaction. We'll look for it later on KGW. Evan, thank you. Also new this noon, a fatal fire at the Columbia Hills Retirement Center in St. Helens. That fire started just after midnight. KGW's Devin Haskins talked to fire crews this morning and joins us in studio. Devin, they confirmed one person died. Yeah, Brenda, that's right. Columbia River Fire and Rescue saying one person died in that fire. Five others were taken to the hospital. 23 residents were also set up by the Red Cross at a nearby hotel. More than 35 firefighters from multiple jurisdictions responded to help rescue the residents. In all, 33 people were evacuated from the retirement community. The fire was pretty extensive, destroying at least six units. And crews say that when they arrived, they heard an explosion that sent debris flying, although they're not sure what caused that explosion. The battalion chief for Columbia River Fi and Fire, Fire and Rescue says fires at retirement homes are more difficult. Listen as he explains how they had to literally pull some residents out of the windows to rescue them. That makes it very, very difficult. So most of the evacuations we could walk, but very slowly. There were quite a few that we had to go get wheelchairs and wheel them over, and there were quite a few that we had to carry. And then all of the rescues had to be carried. So as we pulled them out of the back, our firefighters had to carry them over to here so that we'd get them to area ambulances. A police officer and firefighter were also injured, although both have since been released from the hospital. Investigators are trying to find the cause. So when we know, you'll know both on air and online. Brenda. Oh, what a scary night. Devin, thank you for the update. Now to some of the day's other headlines. A warning just in from Newport Police. Listen to this. They say multiple explosive devices have washed up on the beach in the Newport area. That is what one of them looks like. Police have found three separate devices between Yoquina Bay State Park and Agate Beach. Those devices are white and have a label that reads warning explosive simulator hand grenade M116A. Police are asking people obviously not to touch them and to call 911 if they see one. 
Police are investigating a deadly crash that killed a cyclist in southeast Portland. A semi truck hit the woman at the intersection of southeast 26th and Powell. There's a lot of traffic in this area day to day, and it's right by Cleveland High School. Police say some of the students witnessed what happened. The crash did trigger a lockout, which is meant to keep students safe and on campus. Police have not released the cyclist's name, but say the truck driver is cooperating with investigators. And a Portland woman just got a $40,000 payout from the city. A jury ruled police used unreasonable force against her during the 2020 protests. Erin Wenzel sued the city for assault, battery and negligence. She says officers hit her with a nightstick and pushed her even though she complied with their orders. Jurors heard from medical experts who confirmed Wenzel's arm was broken and that she has PTSD in part because of what happened. And those are your local headlines. Well, we are five weeks out from the election, which means that candidates and campaigns are doing everything they can to get your attention. Political ads are flooding your TV screen. You may not like them, but as Pat Doris explains, they're effective. With political ads everywhere right now, we looked into a couple of questions from you about what you're seeing. Viewer Marina noted the negative ads and emailed to ask, are there any studies that show whether these negative political advertisements really work? Well, it's an excellent question, Marina, and the answer is yes. I found one report from the University of California in 2019. A professor of psychology found the framing of an idea or an issue, that is the way that it's presented, determines whether you remember it or not. Presenting something in a negative frame is more sticky than a positive frame, they found. Our brains seem to be hardwired to remember negative information. Now to a question from Garrett. He wanted to know, why aren't political ads stating their party? Are they ashamed of their party or expecting voter stupidity? Well, Garrett, the answer to both is no. Here's Republican strategist Rebecca Tweed. Well, when folks get their ballot, you know, they're not reading it position by position as much as they're reading it by name recognition, right? And so there's sort of two strategies is one, make sure that your name is heard the most and the loudest and the most often so that when people get their ballot in that huge voters pamphlet statement, they just say, oh, well, this is the candidate I've heard the most. I've seen the lawn signs. There's letters to the editor. I met him at the fair. So there you are. Some candidates want you to remember their name, not so much their party or anything else. And negative ads are used because, well, they work. Whether you want to or not, you do remember them. Pat Doris reporting there on the story. <laughs> Well, Rod is back in the Weather Center. You have a little update for us on the forecast? I do, and I was thinking, Brenda, you know when the weather person says it's going to stone and it doesn't? I don't want you to remember my name, <laughs> right? It's the opposite. <laughs> All right. uh, well, so far today's been just like yesterday, right? We started off, we had fog, we had drizzle spots. It's still overcast. I thought maybe at noon today we would start to see some clearing. I still think it's going to happen, but long view driving down to Portland, uh, down to Salem, the visible satellite image shows solid cloud cover. Big hole opening up over the coast range, and this is eroding now through Yamhill and up into parts of Washington County. So again, clearing is coming. And see right there along the coast, that's Cannon Beach and up into Tillamook Head and Seaside. And that proves the satellite image is correct. Been a beautiful uh, clear spot, more than not, in Cannon Beach today. Folks out walking, really enjoying themselves. 59 degrees is the early temperature. And if you go out to the gorge, by the time you get to Hood River, it's sunny. But here's Carson, which is just a little bit past Skamania. And you can see it's uh, just starting to clear out as we look at uh, the camera out in Elk Ridge Golf Course. Winds are light out in the gorge today. Hood River is expected to be up to around 80 where it is quite sunny out. Downtown Portland overcast, current temperature 62. We'll need sun no later than I would say 2 o'clock to get up to 70 degrees today. Forecasting a high still of 72. 80s tomorrow? That's what we're thinking. That seven day forecast is coming up. Yeah, little rebound. Thank you, Rod.